Hi. Yay, yeah, buddy. Good job, boy. I ended up going to the Humane Society of West Michigan to find Mocha. I actually went there to look at a different dog and ran into Mocha, fell in love with her. And I kind of got her because I wanted a companion that I could take care of, um, something that would, like I could always look forward to. You know, when I'm at work, when I'm at school, I kind of think, I can't wait to get home and see Mocha. Like, <laughs> she's great and she just takes away like a lot of the stress of my like daily life and she just gives me something to like giggle and laugh at. So I found out that I could have a dog on campus when I was actually working for CVS because they had us do some training modules where we were learning about different rights that people have with service animals and ESAs and where they're allowed to go. So I kind of started thinking about it. I'm like, you know what, I, I definitely like could apply to that. I could bring Mocha to campus with me. I could have her in my housing. Um, and if I really need to, I would be able to take her to like a grocery store or like out and about. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Woo! <laughs> so happy. Ooh, bless you. So to get Mocha certified, I actually just went on my phone and Googled uh, emotional support animal registration. So it just took me to the USDR, which is United States Dog Registry. And she didn't need a doctor's note or anything. I just signed her right up. It took probably two minutes. Just filled out a couple of things about her and uh, myself. And I think it was like 60 or $80, but then it was like a little extra for the vest on top of that. I bring Mocha on campus with me because I have anxiety and especially with class. So if I'm sitting in class, professor starts talking, sometimes I feel a little overwhelmed, uh, a little nervous. So if I look down and see her tongue flopping out, her laying on her back and asking for belly rubs, it just kind of distracts me and just keeps me from worrying about like future stuff. like how I'm going to do in this class, what grade I'm going to get, um, what, what am I going to do with my next job and stuff. So she alleviates a lot of the stress that I have and anxiety. Even with her vest on, people will see it but don't entirely understand what ESA stands for. So they just are curious and they'll ask for me to explain like, why she's able to come into this like classroom or to um, uh, grocery stores. So my neighbors and roommates actually love Mocha because whenever my like neighbors have parties and I take Mocha outside to go to the bathroom, they all come running out of the house, they all want to pet her and she cheers them up. And my roommates, they love when they come home, she's just waiting in the windowsill, waiting for them and she'll jump off the couch and like get so excited when they walk in and she'll do her little butt wiggles and I feel like she just increases the mood of everyone and you know, everyone loves having a dog around them. I don't know, sometimes if my depression gets bad, it gets to the point where I don't really like to leave my room, I don't like to get out of bed in the morning. And Mocha, just because she's so innocent and she relies on me for her own care, she definitely motivates me to get out of bed, to not only take care of her, but take care of myself. It gets me out of the house, I take her to the dog park, and she definitely increases my mood um, overall. And like when I take her to class and I sit out of class waiting for it to start, a lot of people will come up to me and ask if they can pet her, and just seeing how much she affects their mood and just makes them smile and I feel like she also just increases the mood of everybody around her. I think people love having dogs so much because dogs will love you regardless of your if you're rich or poor. They love you regardless of like your housing situation. They're just they really look up to us because we take care of them and they kind of consider us as their pack and they rely on you just as much as like I rely on her. Like we definitely mutually benefit each other. And I think it's just because they're so innocent, they're goofy, and I don't know, they're just really loyal to you. So I want people to know that when I bring Mocha to class, it's not just because I have a dog and just because I can bring her to class. I bring her because she actually does benefit me and I benefit her. She has separation anxiety, so we both help each other out. But I feel like I don't want people to think that having an ESA is just a way to abuse 
your right to just bring a dog to class because you can. Like, people actually need that to help them with whatever mental illness that they have. My name is Jean Lindell and I am the Head of Disability Services on campus. My name is Carrie Detells and I'm Coordinator of Disability Services uh, and work with Jean. And um, our role is to approve reasonable accommodations for students with disabilities on campus. The service animal has full access to the campus because it provides a, a service for that person. It's trained. The assistance animal is under the Fair Housing Act, so those animals are in only the residence halls. Assistance animals are considered reasonable accommodations for a disability. Service animals don't fit into the same category. They're not considered reasonable accommodations. Um, I don't know what you'd say, more of a, a civil right. Mm -hmm. I'd say another big difference between the assistance animal piece as a reasonable accommodation and service animal, it, uh, for any reasonable accommodation, we can ask for verification of the disability and then how does the accommodation mitigate some functional limitations of that disability. For a service animal, we can't do that. We can only ask two questions, which is this needed for a disability and what task or job does it has the animal been trained to perform. There is a misconception among the public, I think, that a service dog has to be wearing some type of identification, whether it's a vest or a collar. There are um, a number of, I mean, you can go on websites and look and you can pay to have your dog certified or you can pay to get a vest or you can pay to get some paper that says this is a trained service dog. And I think that that has caused problems within the disability community for real, legit service mm -hmm. animals. We have some students who have varying housing accommodations and if their accommodation is a single room and they struggle with interpersonal interactions with people, having an animal gives them some, some companionship, some connection to something. Uh, um, so I think in those types of situations it can be helpful for the dog. So currently I am the resident director of Phelps Hall. Um, we have about 160 first and second year students in our building and this is my second year in this community. I've worked at Hope for about, um, I would say, this is my sixth year um, working in residential life. And so, so I'm part-time staff right now, and currently what that means is I supervise this building only. Um, I have about six RAs that I supervise, and then I make sure that they are you know, taking care of the building, making sure that they're really building community and serving as a resource for students. I always had my eyes set on like a dachshund, like I love wiener dogs. I just love dogs that are long and are short. I just think it's precious. Um, and so we did not um, adopt Wally from any sort of shelter. We actually knew we wanted a corgi pretty early on in our relationship, um, my husband and I. And so we decided to kind of research where to find corgis in the area for West Michigan. But we actually ended up finding a family in Carson City that has been like raising and breeding corgis for like 20 years. We went to their house and get to pick him out of his litter um, and then you know we met him maybe when he was about four weeks old and then we took him home when he was about eight weeks old. So for us Wally is officially our pet. He is our full-time dog. He's, he's just our friend, our family member and then we are just happy to lend him to students uh, whoever wants to hang out with them. He's kind of just like an extra treat for the students but he's definitely our, our pet. He's a big cuddler so I just really like to hang out with him, go on walks and most evenings we're just on this couch um, just eating popcorn and watching some, some movies. He's a big popcorn lover. So yeah, so we let students know right at the beginning of the year that he is available for them if they just wanna go for a walk, if they wanna you know, take him on a round across the building, if they just need to say hi for a few minutes, just it depends on what their needs are. So I'd say we have um, a variety of students that come by and just visit him. I get a ton of messages on my board. Um, I have like a little dry erase board at my door and students just always write love notes to Wally um, and so I try to keep my door open you know Thursdays and Fridays I have the days off and so students will just come up to the door I have the gate up they'll just you know either come in the apartment or they'll just stay out at the gate and pet him and talk to him and have little dog conversations which is fun and then sometimes on those days or like throughout the week in the evenings I'll have students knock on my door and ask to walk him 
And so they'll take him on long walks or, you know, enjoy an afternoon around campus with him, which is really fun. And he comes back all tired, so he gets his exercise for the day, and, and then a student gets a good pet interaction. So I'd say, like, the typical student is, like, the one who just visits and, like, misses their dog, is maybe a little bit pet sick from home, and just has a quick hello. But then we do have some students that I think really do rely on him a little bit more for like that emotional support element. We have some students that are like our regulars. They'll just stop by maybe, you know, once a week, once every other week, and they'll ask to walk him. And it, you can tell it like really makes their day. Like sometimes they'll come and say, it was a really hard day for me. Can I spend time with Wally? And give him a bag, give him a leash, remind him he's a puller, and then they just go for it. So it's fun to uh, see him kind of serve that purpose for students. He's got this move, like every time students come by to visit him, he like runs up to the door, he, you know, he sits and he greets them, he might like chirp a little bit, and then as soon as a student starts petting him, he falls to the ground and he like goes on his back and he like automatically gets a, gets a belly rub, it's like his MO, it's hilarious. Okay, good girl. Oh, that's so good. That's our newest trick. I have always wanted a dog. I never knew when I was gonna get a dog, or how I was gonna get a dog, or how I was gonna take care of a dog. Um, and then one day I was just like, let's just let's just get a dog. So I was actually at the Dow working, and I was looking up pictures of dogs and what kind I wanted, and I went on all these adoption sites, and I was like, that's her. And so I, that night after work, right after work, I drove three hours to go get her and came back and it's like, Dad, I got a dog. <laughs> She's been part of our family ever since. Kala is an emotional support animal. She technically isn't allowed anywhere unless it's in Cook Hall, the building that I live in. Well, obviously me and Ashley are best friends. I was like, I want a dog. She's like, okay. So we're gonna have another roommate, right? <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> she loves Kala. She considers herself Kala's aunt, so it's it's really funny. But you know, it's she's my responsibility, so I'm not like putting anything on Ashley. Sometimes I'll be late to work, so I'm like, hey, can you let Kala out before you go to class? And she's like, yeah, no problem. But she loves having Kala. It's like her emotional support animal too. So. My sister will ask, hey, is, or is, yeah, Kala, is she in your room? Because I'm just stressed, I just need Kala. Or people from the team, or people from class, are like, hey, can I, can I go around with Kala? I'm like, please do. <laughs> like, because it's not just me, it's not just Ashley, it's other people on Hope's campus that I barely even talk to, and they come play with Kala and it makes them happy, so. And one specific thing that I am so thankful for her for is, she knows when I'm upset. She knows when my mood changes. She knows when something's up. And she will literally crawl into my lap and just sit there. Or lick my face or just be close to me. Like, for example, today, I'm just stressed. School is stressful. And I just gave up and I just got back into bed, didn't go to class. And she jumped up there and was like curled up right in front of me. And I was like, wow, <laughs> you, you know, thank you. <laughs> But she just, she knows when someone's mood changes, she knows when she's needed. And it's crazy that a dog could ever do that, but I never thought dogs could do that, but living proof right there. So, so some hard things to deal with having Kala. Sometimes you just feel guilty <laughs> having her in the room while you're in class, but I think that that's nothing compared to the time that I spend with her, the time that I give to her. She is a huge responsibility. It's like having a kid. It's honestly like having a kid. I would tell people before they get a dog to know the responsibility because it is hard. You will be stressed. Um, you're not the only person you have to worry about anymore. You have a baby to take care of. Um, one thing I wish people knew is that they don't have to. I don't, they don't have to ask to hang out with Kala or pet Kala, and I know a lot of people are different about that, but just who I am, who I want to be, like, I wish they knew that she doesn't really care, she wants love, she wants attention. I think it's just like a best friend that doesn't talk. <laughs> like, you can tell 
your dog anything. You can do anything with your dog and they don't judge you. They don't ask why you're doing this or why you're doing this. Um, that's, that's my thing. Like, she doesn't judge me. I, she loves me regardless of what I'm doing, regardless of who I am, and that's what people need. So there have been some interesting trends around anxiety and stress with college students. Uh, we started to see a change over from uh, concerns about depression. Uh, have uh, That used to be the number one thing that people would present or come to counseling for was depression, and that changed to anxiety about five or six years ago. We were quite surprised. So when we talk about social media, I think that there is this sense that people put forward these beautiful pictures of what their life is, right? We always post the good things that are going on. We don't post the, the sad or the mundane, right? Today, nothing happened in my life. We don't put that out there. Um, and so people do this social comparison, and it seems like everyone else is doing better than I am. So in addition to service animals, we also now are seeing emotional support animals. And emotional support animals, I think, tend to be maybe a little more controversial or confusing because the individuals who have an emotional support animal don't have a visible or noticeable disability. The animal typically does not have a specific task that they accomplish for the person. For example, if someone is vision impaired and they're using a guide animal, we can clearly observe that the animal is helping the person get from one place to another. But I think with an emotional support animal, the purpose or the reason, the specific reason for the animal can feel confusing to people. And people sometimes then confuse an emotional support animal for a pet. So I, I think the idea of emotional support animals is both wonderful and at times can also be difficult. And I think we can um, watch people that we know, students that we know, who really respond positively to having that sense of connection with the animal, that sense of comfort from an animal. Um, I'm a long-term dog owner and I know at the end of a long day um, how wonderful it is to be able to sit uh, with an animal and just feel that um, kind of comfort. I guess if there was one thing that I would hope that the Hope College community might really consider and understand about emotional support animals is that every emotional support animal should have a very clear purpose for the student who has that animal. And I would hope that as people get to know those students, they would ask them about that. I think we sometimes shy away from asking questions and being curious, and I, I hope that emotional support animals would be more of a part of a conversation on campus. So I think at Hope College in particular, that's what I can, I can speak to my experience, um, I think I've seen more throughout my time here. Um, and it's not just like dogs or cats, but that's like hamsters, it's rabbits, guinea pigs, um, geckos, hedgeho hedgehogs, things like that. Even though Pepper is not an emotional support animal, she is my pet, I, I do find that she has been a good source of comfort to different residents that live within Cook Hall and, and different people on campus that know her. It's allowed me to make some really great connections with people that wouldn't normally stop by. And I've noticed on multiple occasions, people will come in, they wanna see Pepper, they sit down, they start petting her, and, and then they just start sharing about their day or things that are stressing them out. And I think dogs are really therapeutic in that sense that you know, that just that motion of petting and having just like a warm little thing on your lap or near you can really provide a great source of comfort. With emotional support animals, I think it's important to remember that that person that has that animal has it for a reason. So it's not just a fun animal for everyone to play with. It can oftentimes be stressful if people are running at it and, oh, I want to play with your dog or your cat or whatever. It's, it, it can cause a significant amount of anxiety for the animal. Um, it can also really stress out the owner of that animal. If some of the responsibilities of the animal are ending up falling on the roommates or the housemates, those people might have more negative views of that animal that maybe a particular person isn't capable of caring for their animal in the way that they should. 
I think others have really positive experiences. So my name is Nicole Wilson and I'm a residential life coordinator, um, which means that I'm a live-in position. I live in one of the residence halls and then oversee um, the resident directors in a few of the other halls. So Phelps and Gilmore and Van Vleck are my area as well. People are so well connected. Um, so phones, iPads, tablets, screens, television screens, we're just, we're well connected um, and always behind something else. And so um, with that, then I think people are seeing pain and brokenness and suffering that others are experiencing. Um, and then there's, there's that constant worry and fear of, um, I don't feel safe or I don't feel stable. And I got him um, May of 2016. Um, he was a graduation gift from graduating grad school. My parents knew that all of my life I'd wanted my own dog, wanted a, especially a golden retriever. I've been obsessed with golden retrievers. I think first and foremost, there's an innocence with dogs. I really believe dogs are there to love. They're, they're humans. They love their humans. And, um, and so there's this pure innocence. And uh, I see it every time Bentley does something naughty. And all I have to do is give him that look. And, you know, he freezes and it's like, Mom, I'm so sorry. You know, he's, he's there to just, to love me. And I know that and I see it. The power of animals is that it forces you to step outside of yourself. And in college, I think we have a tendency to think about ourselves a lot. What classes am I gonna take? Where am I gonna live? What should I study? Um, who are my friends? What should I get involved with? And so pets have this way of making you stop and realize the world's a little bit bigger than just yourself. I think there is a time and place for an emotional support animal for a resident. Um, I think they're few and far between, and I don't want the trend to start of, oh, I'll just go get an emotional support animal, um, simply because residence halls are not built to um, house campus pets. Um, and so, um, and having an animal in a small space, that can be tough as well. And it affects the roommate and the, the floor and the community, both positively and negatively. But at the end of the day, you're still having an animal who there's fur, there's slobber, there's food, there's potty times. Um, and so what is what does that look like in a small space? And my favorite Bentley moment in the res hall has been move-in day. Um, this past fall, there was a, a freshman student moving in, carrying all of her stuff and is tears just streaming down her face. And um, mom's trailing behind her with the rest of her stuff. And Bentley and I are gonna go out, gonna go potty, gonna go on a walk. Um, and this this girl sees Bentley and she drops her stuff and she, she falls to the ground and hugs him as tears are streaming down, down her face. And she just looks back up at her mom and goes, mom, I think I'm gonna make it here. And I was like, that is the moment that, that's why I have this dog, right? Like he, he not only is he my best friend, but it's like he's, he's making an impact. And it's, it's little moments like that that I'm reminded of the power of pets and the power of animals and the power of a, a sweet, precious little dog that, that just loves and just is there to, to, to be there for to students. I mean, he loves this job. He, he loves, uh, loves people and he loves these women. I call them his girlfriends. He's got 265 freshman girlfriends. And, um, and yeah, and so I see him every day lighting up their world and their life. So he's a good, he's a good uh, addition to this hall. <laughs> Animals are a comfort. Um, they give us something to focus our time and energy on that's not of ourselves. It's caring for someone else. And I think that the greatest joy in life is when you're thinking outside of yourself and you're caring and loving those around you. And even if that's a pet. How's it going, Sammy? Come here. Come see Sammy. What's up, pup? Who's a good dog? Who's a good dog for mama? <laughs>